Welcome back to FIFA 20 career mode, welcome back to the manager's journey and welcome back to 1920 gaming. It is a new year in this career mode, it is the 1st of January which of course means the transfer window is now open. And that of course means we get a much needed break from the on pitch action. Uh, if you haven't seen the last episode yet it might be worth going to watch it. For those of you who have seen it you'll know that we suffered some stinging late goals in our last two games. Which meant that we only managed to pick up just the one point from a possible six. So the break could not have come really at a better time. So this episode then, uh, what's going on in it? Well, it's going to start off with another meeting with our owner. Um, as you remember back, if you've been following it uh, a few episodes ago, we had a surprise meeting from our owner, uh, our illustrious chairman. While we were out on the training ground and he called a meeting just to discuss what was going to happen in January. And one of the things that he mentioned was he was going to evaluate where we were in the league, our performances. He was going to come to all the home games during December. And then he was going to come back exactly like he's done now and let us know whether we're going to be getting any investment. Um, help bringing players in and this, that and the other. So it was a long meeting. We had a good discussion, um, there's a lot of things come up that again will be announced in uh, due course. But as for January, um, because of where we are and what we're doing so far this season, um, the chairman is actually quite happy with where we are. Uh, we're in a higher league position than anyone probably anticipated given the last four seasons. And in terms of our points total, we're already on for the third best that they've had in four seasons. We've already eclipsed what happened last season. So, uh, he actually, it is quite bad news, doesn't think that we actually need to invest any more into the squad. Uh, when we spoke at the beginning of the season with his rep, um, we targeted 60 points. We're sitting on 47 already and he sees no reason why we can't just go and collect another 13 points uh, with the games we've got left this season. So he's not going to be pumping any more money into the squad. We've got to work with what we've got and we've got to sell to buy. And what we have at the moment, as you can see there, is uh, £2.5 million pounds to spend on players and 24000 in the wage budget. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the squad now and see what we can do with it. Um, as you can see, this is the way that we line up at the moment, as you'll all know by now. Um, the only player in the reserves ranks at the moment, because we've got such a short squad, is Burke. And that is because, as we know, he's retiring at the end of this season. So, going forward, this would be the base of the squad that we've got. Um, changes that need to be made. Uh, well, looking at it, we uh, what we've done this season. Um, the central defence is an absolute nightmare, we just can't find a partnership that works. Um, I like the fact that we've got Power and Dicker in midfield because they're both leaders, but neither of them can control the game and pass the ball, so we need to sort out the central midfield area as well. And the two guys up front, um, Cameron's starting to come into his own, Brophy's an absolute star. But talking about Brophy and McKenzie, something else that came out of the um, meeting with the chairman is this. I'm absolutely devastated by this, but he thinks with the form that Brophy is in at the moment, and McKenzie as well, that we can get top dollar for them. And one of the things that was discussed also in the meeting with him was the fact that the Youth Academy might be under a bit of threat at the moment. Um, the money and the company that they're using, there's a bit of a dispute over it. So that could cause delays, which could cause more cost, which means before the chairman wants to pump money into it, I think he's going to do it when he absolutely has to. Um, it means that we've got to sell our best two assets of the season. Um, Hopefully, from my point of view, because obviously I'm in this, and the infrastructure building on my side is to keep us up as high in the league as possible, and getting as much money from finishing well in competitions as possible, 
and just flat out getting results. That's my job, and it's going to be a lot harder if both of these leave uh, in this transfer window. So we've seen the finances we've got to work with. We've seen the uh, situation that we're in regarding the meeting with the chairman. We've seen the squad and we know where we need to invest what money we have got. And starting uh, at the beginning of the season, I did start sending scouts out straight away, just looking at players that I was interested in. So as you can see there, um, I've been adding to it day by day, game by game, episode by episode. So we've got a real strong list of candidates uh, for players to come in. And the area we're going to target just at the moment is that centre back area. And that is because when I looked at the league in detail, we're sitting third at the moment, as you know, behind Celtic and Rangers. Uh, in the goal scored column, we're right up there with them, and there's a bit of a gap between us and fourth, which is uh, Aberdeen. Um, so, yeah, we don't create as many chances, but we are quite clinical in front of goal, while we still have Brophy and McKenzie anyway. Um, but in the goals against column, way, way too many. Uh, we're talking about 10, 15 goals against more than Celtic. Um, Rangers are about 10 conceded less as well. So as you can see here, Okore, um, I remember him from his Villa days. Don't really know what happened to him after that, but it seems he's playing at Allberg. Um when I did click on him to see what he was valued at, I did notice that he was actually free. So there is no way we can pass up an opportunity like this one. Um, I feel like if I leave it and dither and right, do I really want to do this sort of thing that somebody else is going to come and snap him up. He's still a good age. He's still worth quite a bit of money. Um, it seems like the guy's been around forever. I know that he's quite quick from his Villa days, I know that he's quite strong, and that is exactly what we need at the moment. We don't have an actual commanding, quick centre-back, and that's proved to be an Achilles heel for us, so we have to target that area first, it's in the most need of work. And to get a free transfer in that position, like why would you not if you can do it? His wages, he's going to make him the highest paid player in the club. Um, but if we want to push Rangers and Celtic, exactly like I said to the chairman in the meeting, we are going to have to at some point break that barrier um, if we're really serious about challenging. And with this one in particular, we're not paying a transfer fee, so what we have got to pay out in wages um, will be saved by obviously not paying that fee. So let's see how we get on. Uh, of course he's going to want crucial, of course he is, he's going to be head and shoulders above what we've got at the moment. So that's not an issue, um, I've got a feeling he's probably only going to want one to two years. He's not going to want much more than that, um, I would like to keep him around for three, four seasons, possibly. Um, but obviously, why would you not go for five, um, if you can get them, oh, that's a massive bonus. So will he go for the five? He won't. He does want the one year. I thought that would probably be the case, but we'll get him for two and see if we can change his mind about the club why we're actually uh, why he's here. Hopefully he can enjoy his time. And of course it's up to us to do the wages. Uh, uh, he's on ten and a half at the moment. He's on crucial. I mean he's really not given much at all in these negotiations so far. I do want to negotiate hard with him, but I also don't want him to walk out. So um, we'll try seven and a hundred k for now. Seven's not too far away from our ceiling at the moment. I think our highest paid currently is five k, maybe a bit less. So seven's not outrageously um, above our pay grade at the minute. And surprisingly, he's actually happy with that. He didn't walk out. Um, so that is a damn good bit of business. Uh, well, I think it is anyway. Obviously, we don't get him till next season. But be there as it may, he's now part of the club. And yeah, he's going to be a strong, quick, commanding defender. 
and if we train him up he should also be able to be playing out from the back as well uh, another guy that I looked at was this Nelson I like the fact that he's a leader I want as many leaders in the team this season as possible well in this series sorry as possible we didn't really have any in the Warsaw career so I do want to put that right but at the moment we can't get him um, this Miles Robinson guy really really interests me he's quite young he's athletically really really good all round again he's going to need technical training but everybody in this team needs technical training anyway um, and with his price only being at 1.3 uh, we could get him quite easily and also he's quite young so again if we kept him for three four five seasons he's going to be a lot lot more than we pay for him now we got AK from Bournemouth way out of our price range Saliba interested me as well but he's on loan anyway even if we could afford him this guy here um, I really liked the look of him and his age but again he wouldn't leave PSG to come here at the moment anyway um, and also he's out of our pay grade Mason Holgate was another one that interested me, but he's recently moved. Um, Denia, again, out of our pay grade. Stones, I know that seems like a bit of an unrealistic one, but he's not played games now regularly for the past two, three seasons. So, in that sense, I could see it being realistic if we offered him crucial and he's guaranteed game time. Not in the first season. Some of these are not on here for this season, so keep that in mind. They're on here for down the road when hopefully we're in Europe season after season after season and it becomes that little bit more realistic then. But for now, um, this is our really only other option. Uh, so we're going to go for it. We're going to see what we can do. I would really like to get him in. I think him and Akure would be next season a really good partnership. But uh, yeah, we've got to get him through the door first. So let's see if we can get these negotiations done. He's valued at 1.3. Uh, typically, I think maybe a mil would be a good opening offer here. I can't remember if a mil was what I offered, but th sitting here and thinking about it now, um, yeah, I think a million would be about right. We, I forgot we, uh, we tried to get Bruce off the books as well but they weren't having none of that as you can see the box underneath has not appeared so yeah they weren't having none of that um, so yeah I think we go straight in with a mill we'll find out right now I can't remember how these turn out by the way like I said it was over a week ago and a lot happens during a week uh, with things at work and this that and the other but yeah I was thinking what I would do now was obviously exactly what I was thinking then I think a million's fair uh, but they didn't budge 1.1 then will we get him for 1.1 we have got to save every penny we can in this series at the moment because we're really on the pitch not a well funded club but you have to keep in mind uh, I will keep saying it from time to time we're trying to build a club here in this uh, part of our journey not just a first team and reserves we're actually trying to build infrastructures and all this that and the other so we have to keep that in mind even though we've got wealthy owners they are spending it elsewhere as well and we do get him in the end for 1.2 million which is still going to be a shrewd investment I think um, he's going to grow in overall a lot and he's going to get his technical training which will do that quite quickly so he's going to be worth a lot more than 1.2 million when it comes to resale um, but again, that's only half the battle. First, we have to get in through the door. And I really, really cannot remember how this bit went at all. But obviously, he's going to be getting crucial first team. Uh, they're demanding that out the block. So, uh, yeah, well, yeah, again, he's going to be one of our best defenders. And again, they're the ones demanding. They want four, but obviously, we're going to offer the five. 
Um, release clause normally is next, is it? Yeah. Um, he's not going to be having a release clause. We've already got stung by one of those in this series. Um, so obviously he's going to want that in his salary. And the only thing that they don't demand is the wages. <laughs> of course it is. So he's on three at the moment. Obviously he wants crucial first team. Um, but we have got to keep in mind as well. He wants a little bit more because we denied him of that release clause. Um, so four maybe. Four seems about right. And again we saved 100k off his transfer fee. So if we offer him that in his signing bonus we've really not lost anything. And will he go for that? I mean, he's nodding yes, but what will the agent say? I don't think he'll walk out on this one, though. No. He's saying that's fair. That is good. So we've got a new centre-back partnership for next season. We've still got Finley as well. We are going to look to off-road Bruce at some... Off-load Bruce, even, at some point. Um, probably the end of the season. And that's if he doesn't retire first. But for me, I would class that as a strong start to the January transfer window. Uh, our biggest faults, like I say, have been lying along the back line. So with that in mind, we strengthen there. We're trying to improve it. And right at the bottom of this list here, you can see that there is indeed an offer for McKenzie. And that, and that would be the first of four offers for him. Um, at the moment you can see we're whizzing through this one uh, I tried to rinse every single penny out of these deals as I possibly could but um, no one was budging nobody wanted to pay a single penny more than what his value was uh, as you can see right now um, so in the end I've been told he's got to go I've been told that Brophy has got to go so as much as it pained me to do it Yep, that is Mackenzie probably going out of the door. Um, that was the fourth manager that sat in that seat trying to get him off of me. And in the end, I just had to give in and let him go. Um, it's a much bigger offer than we ever had before. So I can see why the chairman would say he's got to go. Um, at the beginning of the season, we got offered something like 1.6 million for him. And we've just collected 2.3 so that initial 1.6 million is all we get and the club's keeping the half a million or so that was over and the same kind of thing here with Brophy um, not long to go now until the Celtic game so I'm really anxious that these deals are going to go through before that and we might not have time to bring anybody else in so as well as Mackenzie there being having an offer accepted, there is also a Brophy offer accepted, and there's another one coming for him here as well. Which um, yeah, we're gonna try and get as much money for these as we can, because remember, even though these have had to go to recoup money, uh, we are allowed to spend. A portion of what we make, obviously, the clubs taking their money off the top like they would do. And again, we're trying to get as much as we can out of these clubs for these players. And there you go, Hamburg have actually accepted that offer. But again, we could be, we've lost Lyle uh, in this window due to my bad management and not seeing his release clause. Um, Mackenzie there, as you can see, has just come up and sold just as the Celtic game's about to come up. Um and obviously Brophy's awaiting an offer as you can see there as well we've now put Miles, uh, Miles Robinson into training and he's a 70 rated already so that is good he's a promising player he's got that icon next to his name when you come up in the training and yeah uh, quite reeling at the moment because we don't have McKenzie now what we're going to have to do is bring Burke back in and we're going to swap his wing with Thomas and hope for the best against Celtic. Um, I'm really quite not looking forward to not having McKenzie in the team because he was usually the springboard for counter-attacking. 
and getting the ball either in the back of the net or to Brophy. Um, but yeah, that's not going to be happening. And by the looks of that message at the bottom, we're not going to be having Brophy up front in this game either. So this just got a hell of a lot harder. We're not letting Dicker go as well. We've not been told we've got to do that one. So yeah, we're keeping as many players as we can right now. Um, this is going. This was going to be a tough game anyway. Uh, I've mentioned it before. It's not as tough as playing against Rangers, but still, it is going to be a really, really tough game. So let's jump into that now and see how we get on. Before we do that, though, it is Celtic. It's the best team in the league statistically. So you know we've got to do a little bit of a press conference. And for once we're not getting battered about not bringing people in because uh, they're now asking about Miles. And yeah, uh, they're asking what are we expecting. Well, he's being chucked in right at the deep end. Um, like I say, statistically the toughest game of the season are the ones against Celtic. So yeah, baptism of fire for him I'm afraid. Um, he's going to be going straight into the team. I was considering playing Bruce and uh, Wilson, not even Finley, because we know what happens there. But um, yeah, I'm not too sure on the actual partnership that we're going to go with just yet, but he is going to be part of it. And can we deal with the pressure of playing against Celtic? Well, obviously we are going to have to overcome <laughs> that pressure. The pressure is ramped up now without having McKenzie and Brophy, but still we've got to find a way to try and get a result here. Uh, we haven't won our last, uh, any of our last two games. We're coming off the back of a draw and a loss. But we have had a break, um, so yeah, we need to see how we're going to get on now. So we, here we go then, um, Celtic without Brophy or McKenzie, which is the goals in our team, but um, times change, we've got to move on, we don't have them now. Um, for this game we've gone back to the default Killy 4-3-3 that we started with. Um, in defence in the end we went with uh, Robinson and Wilson, uh, Finley doesn't make it and neither does Bruce. Uh, it was never going to be Finley in a big game like this. Um, Wilson just gives us that little bit more passing ability to come out from the back. That's something I'm trying to, in training, develop in Miles as well. So um, hopefully we can start piecing together the way we want to play now. We're starting to change things regarding the team. Um, just on this game, this is going to be the last action of this episode. 
I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed making it, enjoyed doing it. Um, I love sitting back and I'm also watching these back while I'm editing them as well. Because like I said, I play them one week. Go away, do my day job. Come back on the weekend and sit there editing and re-recording the games for the following episode. So um, it takes me a while to remember what's happened, sometimes I don't after such a long week um, and uh, yeah I don't remember the things that happened during the games either so yeah it's really fun to sit back and watch what's happened and yeah it's really fun to sit back and make these. I hope that comes across um, when you're watching them as well but back to the thing at the point I was making this is going to be the last um, action of the episode uh, if you've enjoyed it as much as I have then please do hit that like and subscribe it does help out an awful lot or it definitely will do hopefully because uh, uh, this is a hobby for me uh, that I would love to turn into something that I could do full time um, but for now, if it never makes it to that, it doesn't really matter because I, I do genuinely enjoy sitting there making these. Uh, I look forward to it all week long. And we um, are starting to fall under a bit of pressure here. But yeah, if you have enjoyed it, please do hit that like and subscribe. And now uh, we will get back into it. That is a beautiful through ball there. And Burke now did have a clear route into the box but he was stopped just on the end of it illegally it is a yellow card uh, it deserved to be a yellow card um, but that was a really nice sharp bit of play for us there and we have actually started pretty well in this one I've enjoyed what I've seen so far um, see what we can do with this free kick now we've got the big guy Cameron up front um, but I can't actually see where he is. I think he's just on the edge of the box there. So we're going to go for the shot uh, with Burke. And it's absolutely nowhere near where we was aiming for. But there you go. And Celtic have a goal kick. And I'll tell you what guys. Um, this opening half hour has really been all about us. Um, we've kept the ball quite nicely. Um, we've reduced Celtic to pretty much nothing at the moment. Which is really a tough thing to do. Um, yeah, it's been a really, really positive opening to the game. The slipped Edward in here, though, that's a pretty awkward looking cross. It went just over Miles' his head. And just as I'm saying, oh, well, we've played, we find ourselves 1-0 down. Oh, uh, that's tough. That is really tough. We've really kept Edward quiet because in the first game, he got both of their goals against us. He was a real nuisance. But this time he's turned provider and yeah for all that good play we have had we do now find ourselves 1-0 down and that is really tough to take. Um, we have actually created a few chances ourselves, we've had a few shots at goal um, so it's not like we've just had possession and tried to defend with the ball, we have actually tried to make things happen. Um, we've got to keep in mind it's not an excuse, it is actual fact. We've lost our best two players and considering that is the case, we've done, I would say, really well. Um, it's hard to say that when you're losing a course, but yeah, the general performance has been pretty good. And we now, though, need to just keep doing what we're doing, really. Um, just keep creating the chances keep trying to keep these to nothing just like we've done there that's a great turn there from miles and he's passed that out beautifully as well and um, yeah hope we just need to take one that is the only thing now we've lost so many goals out of this team with mckenzie and brophy we need players now to step up and put that ball in the back of the net for us we've had a few goals from power this season so maybe he can find something but at the moment, I know it sounds really strange because we are playing the best side in the league um, and we are 1-0 down. But I'm actually not panicking that much at the moment just due to how we are playing both with and without the ball. Uh, we are getting towards half-time now though, so we'll just keep this rolling. Uh, Celtic have got us pinned back in here, which is never a good thing. We've done well there um, to block that pass, but then we get it on straight back. The ball has gone straight to the keeper and can we get this up now? Uh, Kareem he's done really well there. 
And Thomas is actually not offside. That flag's not gone up. This has got to be 1-1. He, he's hit it straight at Forster. He was on his stronger left foot. It looked a bit of an awkward shot. The defenders were slowly catching. But, oh man. Uh, he's got to be scoring them in games as big and as tight as these ones. Can we still do something with this corner? I thought Burke might have been slightly offside there, but he wasn't. McGregor, uh, we've got McGregor chasing him down there. Cameron's got the ball now, though, and it is 1-1. One, one. And, yeah, I, I kind of felt like that was coming. Uh, we've pressed, like I said, really well all half. To, we've created chances, and now we have taken one. It's Cameron that steps up. Um, I lost my bearings a bit during the build-up. But Cameron's rifled that one on right after that big chance from Thomas. Uh, we've just kept going. We recycled the ball off the corner. Cameron smashed that one in. And just on half-time now, we do find ourselves one all with Celtic at our place. And can we go on now and do something? In the second half, because that is half-time... And especially now that we level, I would say that was a really good half from us. And we just need to do the same again during the second. And we have started the second well. Um, yeah, Celtic, I've got the ball here. I just want to say uh, I'm really impressed with uh, Miles Robinson so far. Um, he's just one of these players, even in FIFA terms. Let's just hold that thought for a minute because Thomas out of nowhere, he's through here. He's got to score this time, surely. He's gone with a left foot. And this time he has put it away. And we are actually 2-1 up against Celtic. After selling both of our best players right before this game. I'll say it again. The fans just have gone wild and as they should. We are now 2-1 up against the league leaders. Uh, the best team in the division by a, quite a bit statistically. We find ourselves 2-1 up now and playing really, really well against them. Um, I'm really chuffed with that. And we just now, again, just need to keep composed. Um, because it is rather exciting that we're beating these. Um, and just continue to do what we've been doing. Because they have really struggled today. They've looked really flat Celtic. They've not created anything at all. Uh, Wilson's just done well to cut another one out there. I thought that might have gone in the centre, but no. Um, we could actually be in again here now with Cameron already. Uh, I'm going to lose track of what I wanted to say in a minute. Oh, he's beat the defender beautifully there, but that is some save from Forster with his feet. Any other keeper in the league, I reckon that probably would have been 3-1. That was brilliant from Forster, and no, don't concede now. Well done there, uh, O'Donnell. And again, the ball's gone forward now, quickly. And we could be in again here with the right ball now. Here comes Burke. Uh, the defender is catching him, unfortunately. He's still got a chance to do something here. Thomas again, and it's wide. But this has been some game to play in, guys, honestly. Uh, to watch it all back as well. It is bringing back memories of the way I felt when I actually did play this game. Jesus, it was fun to play this one. Um, but yeah, what I was saying before that was Miles. Um, he has been brilliant. Um, he just seems to have all the time in the world when he gets the ball. Uh, his passing is a lot better than what his stats would say that it is. Um, he's dealt with everything so far. He's been a really, really good get to be fair. And here he is now, but this time, uh, I jinxed him. Uh, I actually have jinxed him. He headed it straight down to Edward. I was pressing for him to clear it. It wasn't meant to be a downward header. But if you look at the replay, he was actually at absolute full stretch. And yeah, that's his first foot wrong that he's put today and it is now to all. Um, but we are playing with confidence and I still feel like we can go on and win this game. Um, we're creating a lot more than Celtic. Uh, I don't remember Celtic having many chances at all. I think that maybe they've only had the two that they've scored at the moment. 
because they keep pouring it in there, we keep dealing with it and we keep hitting them up on the counter like this. That's a decent ball inside. Uh, we could be in again here now. Thomas has done quite well to beat his man there. The pass weren't great though and Celtic cut that one out. But yeah, there's still old Forster's made a big mistake there. Unfortunately, Thomas just couldn't capitalise on it. He got there first but couldn't do much with it. And yeah, um, we look a lot more likely to score than Celtic do if someone else is going to score in this one. We've got it on this left now with Hendry, who's lost it a bit too easily there, and Celtic bring it away. So we're almost at the end of the game now, there's just a couple of minutes, we're in injury time. Um, the game has died as a bit of a spectacle, um, it's fell off uh, for both teams really. Uh, it has came up as a little graphic that we have in this game, in fact had 9 shots with 8 on target. Uh, got the two goals, Celtic have had two shots, two on target and got the two goals. So all in all, yes we didn't get the win and it's disappointing that we didn't get the win. But my god the performance was one of the best of the season I'd say, easily. Um, but that is the end of the game and the end of the action guys. So once again thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye.